Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About House. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, we've got another update for the Las Vegas real estate market. We do these every week because we get weekly data, and it's kind of fun to see the changes. Um, what is really shocking in this is the market is real estate market is not behaving like it does every other summer going into the fall. Well, this is not every other summer. <laughs> it's absolutely not. Um, okay, we're going to start. We're going to just go through the data. We'll talk about as we do it. Okay. So here is the uh, market action index. It's 46. It says strong sellers market. I'll read it to you. The market remains in a relative stasis in terms of sales to inventory. Prices have been relatively stable for a few weeks. However, inventory is sufficiently low to keep us in the seller's market zone. So watch for changes in the market action index. If the market is set, prices are likely to resume an upward climb. We've got a graph. This is literally the strongest seller's market we've had in on this date in August in five years, which is really kind of shocking with interest rates being the highest by far they've been in the last five years. Right. So uh, we've said the name of the game is inventory. It continues to be inventory. Okay, let's jump over here, real-time market profile. These are the stats. We're also gonna go through specific graphs because we're gonna look at the year-over-year -year comparison. Sometimes you don't get, these are just like three month, um, four month bites of the data. Uh, median list price has been kind of hanging around 566. Remember, it was 57. It was 470 a year ago. Mm -hmm. It was it's substantially up, or uh, uh, a little less than a year ago. Um, median price new listings 475. And the reason why those two numbers are different, you're like, why are the median list price higher than the new listings? Because Juana, what have what is different about listings that come on the market at say? under 400,000 versus listings that come on the market over 600,000? Well, the ones under 400,000 get snapped up pretty quick uh, because more people can um, can purchase those. The ones that are over 600,000, uh, there are less well-qualified buyers for them. Okay, that's perfect. So that's why those two numbers are, are different. Okay, per square foot, 259. It's been 259 really for about the last month. What's really shocking here is that in May it was 255. Wanna what happens generally from spring to fall with prices like every single year ever? What happens from spring to fall? Okay, so in the spring they go up, as we go into the summer they flatten, and as we progress into the summer they start to oh, get tired a little bit, right? They get tired. They, they get a little they take tired. A nap. They take a nap. And they start to slowly decline, picking up speed, picking up steam as we head into the fall. Okay, but they're going up, which is unusual. Mm -hmm. um, days on the market is declining and all that. Um, and then inventory, it dropped mm -hmm. again. Week over week, right. inventory dropped. Uh, that's almost unheard of. So we're going to go to the first slide. Mm -hmm. Market action index. Now, you see that this is highly volatile week by week okay mm -hmm. but what's really important are those dots the dots are the same day every year for the last basically five years mm -hmm. and you can see today it's a hotter market of course than it was last year but it's basically just as hot as it was in 2021 and 2020 mm -hmm. on the same day those were really crazy markets they were but the difference between now and then is that we had a lot more inventory then so we have lower inventory which is clearly having um, a similar impact as the as the frenzy of low interest rates did. Okay, median list price. This is the other one we showed you. You could see normally this thing sort of, um, you know, it oscillates from spring to fall every year. If you look at a national one of these, it's almost a perfectly like it's going up, but it's kind of going up on a scallop. And it like perfectly goes and you can see all the peaks are all the springs and all the troughs are all the falls. Well, of course, we had a bigger uh, spring to fall drop because interest rates coincided and then inventory picked up. But what shocked is how much the list price. It's actually if you look at the same day last year, it was 519 for median list. We just said it was like 560 something. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's 50,000 more. Than this than last year, right? And interest rates are higher than they were this time last year. Last year at this time, you could still get, you know, high five percent rates to buy a house. Right, but the difference is that now we have such low inventory that 
anything that's good, buyers are willing to pay the money and, and compete for it. They're not going to lowball anything that, that's good because they know that it won't last. Here's price per square foot. This gives you a good analogy. This is probably the best chart showing the um, prices in Vegas. Uh, as you can see, if we go back to that next, the previous dot, that we're bit almost year over year at an increase. And you could see that we're going to be year over year increases are going to start in a couple months automatically unless home prices tank because the last year home prices were declining for like three more months. So we're probably a month away from year over year per square foot increases in that, home prices. That's a possibility. You know, look, the market is, uh, I know that people want to look at past markets and um, use those as, as the guiding principle for, for this market, but this market is different. There's just been so much over the last few years that this market is different in so many ways. You've got the pent up demand from the pandemic. You have the higher interest rates. You have the um, the, the people with the either no mortgage or a very affordable mortgage, low payments, low interest rate. You have well qualified buyers that can't find a home that that fits their needs because there's insufficient inventory. So there are a lot of things in the mix that are different than past markets. So comparing past markets to today is not necessarily helpful. Um, here's a, another chart inventory. Okay, now I intentionally grabbed August 13th of 2021. Mm -hmm. That was literally a crazy hot year for real estate. Mm -hmm. I would say that was within the froth of insanity. Remember, interest rates were still super low. Yes. Okay, that number 2479 is higher than today. Remember, it was 22 and change. Right. We had 10% more inventory. Now, here's the other disturbing thing, Juana, when you look at this chart. This time, every year for the last five years, inventory had already peaked or was getting close to peaking, and then it drops naturally through the late fall and into the, through the winter and into the spring right. because you have more people starting to come out and buy. Well, you have a couple things. You have more people coming out to buy, and then you have less people wanting to sell because go we're going into the school year, we're going to the holidays. So there are lots of reasons why people uh, generally prefer to not sell in the fall. Okay. What's different, though, about this year, and this is what shocked us because we wouldn't have thought six months ago inventory would be less than it was in, like, April because it never is. If you look back over all of these, Look at where inventory is like March and April, and then look at where it is in August. It's substantially higher, including last year. It's much less. As a matter of fact, we're, are, we're at a low. Mm -hmm. What? How does inventory, like when the buyers come back in the fall and the winter, where do they, where do they go? Because there's not enough inventory to decline. Well, so there, there will be even less inventory. And um, I think that... The really sad thing in the whole part in this whole thing is that you've got buyers out there who are well qualified who would like to purchase a home and there's nothing for them to purchase um, and what there is probably isn't to their liking that they don't have a whole lot of choices and that's really unfortunate because I think everybody should get the home that, that they want to buy and um, just so you know we don't actually prefer this is not like our preferred way that real estate should operate this is a mess for everybody. It's a mess for professionals in the business. It's a mess it's a mess for investors who have been trying to buy a rental house, <laughs> trying to when there's, you know, there's literally everything that comes on the market that's within like that range of, that would make a good investment property gets snapped up immediately. Mm -hmm. You can't negotiate the price or do anything like that. Uh, it makes it extremely frustrating. Now, Juana, a lot of people, like a ton of people have dropped in in the comments and said well, this is just like 2006, where the prices went up and now they're going to fall. Because if you look at price, like if price goes up, then it collapses. But that isn't really the case. Like there's no, really actually no comparison. And why is this not like 2006? Like what's the big, like the number one thing in your mind that's the difference? Okay, so I kind of talked about that a little bit briefly a couple of minutes ago. But the number one thing is that in 2006, we did not have well-qualified buyers. Uh, you know, the, the joke was that uh, you, it was helpful if you could fog up a mirror, but not necessary. So the loans that were put out there for consumers were not good loans in the sense that the buyers were not well-qualified. They, um, they had stated income. 
um, you know, their their credit was poor. There were all kinds of issues with those loans, and of course, that came back to to bite everybody because then those people defaulted. The loans that are being uh, taken out today are completely different. First of all, we don't have the number of variable rate loans that we had then. Second, we have well-qualified buyers. So back then, um, the average credit score for a purchaser was in the mid 600s. Now it's in the mid 700s. So substantially more. Uh, back, Almost nobody's getting a hundred percent loan. Back then, people were getting a hundred percent loans, hundred and twenty-five percent loans. Now people are putting twenty percent or more down. Uh, so there, it's substantially different. The, the buyers today are well qualified. They're far less likely to uh, be incentivized to walk away from the loans. Uh, so comparing today to two thousand six is probably not a good guidepost. Okay. Just because you're looking at um, something that maybe on the surface might seem a little similar, it is actually substantially different than back then. The other thing to keep in mind is that we don't have builders over building. We don't have speculative uh, purchase, purchases, either by individuals or by, um, by, by companies. Uh, we have uh, a third of the buyers purchasing cash. So it's so different than 2006 that really, in my view, doesn't really bear a sufficient resemblance to even consider. Stated income loans, you could buy, you could have five houses yes. on your credit report. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could have no job, no money, and just say, hey, I want to get five 100% stated income loans. The lender would be like, oh, sure, because we're going to make a ton of money when we sell this thing in the secondary market. And then you would go out and use that money and buy five houses, and then new construction or whatever. And as soon as you close on it, you would then put it back in the MLS and try to flip it. And then the people behind you were doing the same thing. We'd go, oh, well, I want to get in on this market because it's going so crazy. And they would buy your houses for more than you paid. And then you would pull all that cash and go, oh, I'm going to go do this again and do five more. And then you would go to the new home builders and go, hey, I'm trying to buy five houses. And they were like, oh, well, we're adding like three new subdivisions in the next month. So this whole frenzy was caused because Cash was basically given, money was free, mm -hmm. there was no recourse, no one had skin in the game, so the price was fake. It was like monopoly money. Today, people are putting, either paying cash, they're putting money down. There's literally zero comparison other than you say, well, prices are up, you know, because that, you know, if prices go up, then they have to come down. Well. No, they don't have to come down. It's how markets work. I mean, there's inflation, price inflation built into everything. Well, you could have bought a house in um, Newport Beach, California in 1945 at the end of the war for $2,000. That You could, $2,000. Those You can't buy a house for $2 million in Newport Beach. The little, like the houses on Lido Island, those little cottage houses, $2 million. They were $2,000 in 1945. And money is not worth a thousand times more. It's not inflated a thousand times. Right. And, and we know we've, we've shown you guys enough charts over, um, over time to, to see that over time real estate increases in value. Right. So anyway, we just want to point out that, you know, this low inventory here is really the number one thing driving the real estate market right now. It's not being driven by interest rates because everyone was told interest rates go up home prices would crash because sellers would be forced to just give away their houses for less money because the bot poor buyer wants to buy it and can't afford it. So they just have to drop tank the price to give them all their equity. Well, oh, I we made all this money in the house. We have to give it away because he's he can only get a 7% rate. So um, I'd like to say something that's going to get me a lot of haters. Okay. Um, just do it. I like it. <laughs> you like it. Okay. Um, interest rates are not high enough. So here's what I'm saying when I say interest rates are not high enough. We need interest rates to be higher in order to build up some inventory and give buyers some choices. Because if we have higher interest rates, that will shave off a few more buyers out of the marketplace. That will allow inventory to build up a little bit. And the buyers that are left will have choices, will have room to negotiate. In the current environment, uh, the interest rates are not shaving off enough buyers to give better qualified buyers the room to purchase a home of their choice rather than 
the, the measly inventory that is out there. And I appreciate that what I'm saying is going to exclude a lot of buyers from the marketplace. I fully understand that. But we need to consider that this is a marketplace. And I appreciate that the, the human factor, but that's not what we're discussing. What we're discussing is a healthy marketplace where there is choice, there is inventory, and the most qualified buyers are the ones that are participating. That's not to say that interest rates have to stay high forever, but I'm saying under these circumstances with low inventory, the way to increase the inventory is to raise interest rates. I don't know that, I mean, the 30 year is, we could do a whole video on this. <laughs> the 30 year, the implied interest rate is like 7%. The 30 year though is at 4% and it the, the forward looking for the next year mm -hmm. is that it basically stays there or drops down to like 3.7. So if you take the Fed projection of what the, or no, the 10 year, what the 10 year is gonna do, then you can compare that to what mortgage rates are going to do. Mm -hmm. So mortgage rates are not going to scream up to eight or nine percent like no. people have said. No. Uh, the in, the last inflation numbers came out, and inflation dropped to two percent monthly, which is two point four percent a year, which is the lowest that we've seen in like what twenty four months. Mm -hmm. So inflation's starting to get under control. Um, you know, we're probably past the peak of interest rates. I think we're just sitting at the top. They haven't. You know, if you look at them for the last eight months, they haven't, they've bounced, they've, they've oscillated, but they haven't kept going up. Right. So what do you think will happen with interest rates? Uh, do you think that they'll come down? And if so, when do you think they'll go up? And if so, how much? Uh, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You don't have to agree with us. We appreciate the conversation. Please remember to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.